Any given formula must be translated into terms of raw ingredients. The exact proportion of fine white quartz sand, plus what other ingredients may be specified, potash, lime, antimony, arsenic, barium, boron, lead, zinc, whatever chemicals are required for a particular kind of optical glass are blended together. They form a mixture and the transformation starts. The mixture is ladled or charged into preheated clay pots already in the furnace and slowly melted. The tremendous heat has to be constantly and carefully controlled, just as the stirring of the mixture has to be controlled. Every mixture has its own chart, its recorded history minute by minute, degree by degree. Then, after being subjected for approximately 24 hours to a temperature of nearly 2700 degrees Fahrenheit, the contents of the pot are ready to come out. Molten glass now. Pots containing glass for optical instruments have to be handled differently from others. Covered with insulated drums, such glass is put aside to be slowly cooled or annealed. Batches that are intended for eyeglasses, however, are poured while they are still white hot. And a moment later, a roller passes over the liquid mass, leaving in its wake a flat sheet of solid glass. This also must be slowly annealed. After cooling, large sheets are cut down to sections, each section subdivided into squares, each square about the size of an eyeglass lens. Reheated and pressed into molds, the squares become lens blanks. In special ovens, they're slowly cooled and then cemented to blocks shaped to fit the curvatures of various types of lenses. Now long hours of grinding by these tireless machines, fascinating to watch. And more hours of polishing. Further inspections and the factory operations are complete. An eyeglass lens emerges. A miracle in a quarter ounce of glass. Power to renew man's vision, to extend his useful life, to promote his happiness. Now let's go back to the glass intended for optical instruments. It's been cooling for many days, so the clay pot is broken away. A pot can be used only once for most types of instrument glass. Trained eyes detect the slightest imperfections. Skilled fingers remove those imperfections, for only flawless glass is usable. After rigid inspection, it follows one of several courses. Here it is being reheated, and after pressing becomes blanks for fashioning into lenses and prisms of scientific optical instruments. When extreme curvatures are called for, blanks must be individualed on machines like these. Blank prisms are mounted on blocks and the blocks are then prepared for prism grinding, a highly specialized process. After grinding, long hours of precision polishing. Here, as throughout, nothing short of perfection will do. To make sure of perfection, the optical flat is employed. The flawless surface of the optical flat is held against the surface to be tested. The pattern of reflected light rays between the two surfaces, Newton's rings they're called, reveals deviations from surface regularity as slight as six millionths of an inch, the smallest unit of measurement known.